the single biggest thing, in my opinion, that the majority of these pe- people in this room are doing wrong. This is number one. I believe that 98% of the people in this arena right now buy too much dumb shit. I have become crazy fascinated as I've lived my life of trying to understand why the fuck so many of my parents, immigrants, friends, other immigrants, and just immigrants in general have a disproportionate success rate in the framework of America. And I finally figured it out. They're not smarter. It's not even necessarily that they work harder. It's that they come to America and they buy nothing stupid for 15 fucking years. They just live like shit, buy nothing, save money, buy a business, and move on. The level of insecurity that is permeating this country so that people end up buying cars and houses and clothes that they can't afford to impress people that they don't even like is the great epidemic in our society. I get to say this from truth. I lived my 20s, all my 20s, 22 to 29, my 20s in a shitty fucking apartment in Springfield, New Jersey. I didn't buy any fucking clothes. I didn't have swag fucking sneakers. I, didn't, I went on no fucking vacations. I just fucking worked and saved money. And I was building a business for my parents, not even for myself. So when I tell people to be patient, it's easy because I lived it. I don't stand up here ever talking about shit that I didn't actually do first. And so, if you're not pumped, if you're not like loving life, before you try to figure out the hook or the secret, or if you think Tony's gonna rejigger your fucking brain, or I'm gonna give you, or I'm gonna give you some fucking secret to do on fucking Instagram that's gonna change everything. Before you think about that, go home and look at your fucking credit card bill and stop buying dumb shit. Because when you don't buy dumb shit, that money stays in the fucking bank and you can do something with your fucking life. Instead of having a new pair of fucking off-whites. Who the fuck you flossing for? Fuck. Fuck, Chicago? You, you think somebody's gonna like you better because you're fucking got a new Audi, you dick? Jesus. And that is what is most interesting about this place because if you want to look at this place in a negative way, it's super easy because everybody's fucking fake lifing on Instagram. You know how many people here are gonna go hiking this weekend for the fucking stupid picture? They don't want to go hiking. They just want to get a couple more likes on Instagram. I got fucking, I know people who jump the fence at night at private plane airports to take a photo to make pretend they fly private. Do you fucking understand what's going on? And then it gets deeper. There are people in bullshit relationships right now posting photos of themselves on vacation acting like they're fucking happy. My friends, this is a manifesto in Chicago this morning about executing on truths. That shit. And let me give you very basic truths. If you spend money on shit you don't need, you're gonna lose. If you buy those things to impress other people, you've already lost. You need to take a step back and understand what are you doing. This is not a conversation today about making more money. Success means being happy. Not how much money you have. We are in the middle stages of mental unhappiness, mental issues in our country predicated on a lot of different things, not paying the piper in 2009 like we should have. We should just be getting out of a depression. But we all got bailed out. Let's start there. On the greatest generation of funny parenting I've ever seen in my life. My favorite thing going on in the world right now is 40 to 60 year olds shitting on millennials when they were the fuckers that raised those people. (laughs) 
That's my favorite shit. These kids are so soft. No shit, dick. You gave them an eighth place trophy. These kids don't take feedback well. No shit, dick. When their teacher yelled at them, you ran to the school and fucking fought like an asshole. Fuck, that pisses me off. Guys, let kids lose. Let's, let's actually talk about losing. Micro losing is the greatest shit. I stand here in front of you today because the first 18 years of my life, the world told me I sucked and I lost at everything. I sucked at school, I wasn't big enough for sports, everything fucking sucked. That's right, bro. But we're fucking here now. And we're here now because a singular person in my life, my mother, instilled such disproportionate self-esteem in me without creating entitlement. When I was nice to people, she fucking praised the shit out of it. When I struck out in a game, she didn't make pretend some shit was rigged. She said, the pitcher was better than you, dick. (laughs) The fine line, how many people here consume my content? I'm gonna give you a secret I've never said. All I am is the puppet and the byproduct of Tamara Vaynerchuk. What I'm trying to do for you is what she did for me. What Tamara, my mom Vaynerchuk, that's who I said, did for me was she positively and optimistically gave me a framework of the world, but she didn't create entitlement because when I lost, I lost and when I won, I won. And so when you look at my content, you can see certain times when it feels fucking a little rough and a little edgy, and other times when it's warm and fuzzy, it's because both exist. And everybody thinks you have to pick sides. It's like the bullshit in our country right now. People think you have to pick sides. Everybody starts with zero followers. I wanna remind everybody that everybody starts with zero followers. In 2007, When Twitter hit the scene, I spent six, seven, eight hours a day between 7 p.m. and two in the morning going on Twitter and replying to every single person that mentioned anything about wine for six hours a day for four years and still nobody knew who the fuck I was. So when I hear people put out three posts on LinkedIn after a keynote like this and then email me and say, hey Gary Vee, loved you in Chicago, great talk, but gotta tell you, you're wrong. And I reply, what happened? Well, I posted on LinkedIn and nothing good is happening. And then I ask, how long you been doing it? And like, well, I've posted twice for the last two weeks. And I reply, you're a fucking asshole. I just looked at this dude and like, you, you know when you can feel like, you, like, how is anybody confused that it takes, let me say it very slowly, an obnoxious amount of work to create any level of success? There is so much confusion in this system about the amount of work ethic that needs to be deployed to actually have success. Let me tell you this, anybody you've ever met that made it worked their fucking face off. You know people that are rich that didn't, they inherited it, but they didn't make it. And the confusion of the one or two stories you hear about when it happened fast, like Instagram or Facebook, has confused everybody. And the amount of excuses we put into the system so that we don't have to do that work is remarkable. What's interesting is, The reason I have such a good framework on this is because I am one of the great all-time worst students in the history of this country. I mean it. I literally never opened a book in high school, did all my Scantron tests, C-B-C-B-A-C-B-A. If there's any kids in the crowds, I'm gonna give you a real good secret if you're in public schools. They just push you through. The reason I watch people live for the weekend and love Friday like it's the greatest shit ever because they hate their Monday through Friday so fucking much, 
The reason I hear the system's broke, my boss is a dick, it doesn't work for me, I'm not for that, all the, it's just excuses not to do. It's the same shit I did from first grade to 12th grade because I didn't want to do that bullshit homework that meant nothing in real fucking life. The problem is that shit ended when I was 18. You've got the rest of your life. Which gets me back to this. This thing freaks me out so much you can't imagine because the one thing this thing is is actual opportunity that our grandparents didn't grow up with. This thing allows you to still be practical and maintain the job that you hate so you can pay off your student loans and your mortgage but create your side hustle on here around the shit that you actually love whether that's the fucking Chicago Bears, whether that's fucking sneakers, whether that's doing comedy skits, whether that's reincarnating the formula that your grandmother had for soup from your country that you're now gonna sell direct to consumer on the back of Uber Eats. I don't give a fuck what ridiculous thing comes out of your mouth This thing, if you make content on it and understand where people actually pay attention, actually gives you a prayer for that to happen.